Choose the challenge. That is our Women's History Month theme. And it's because of the woman who came before us and chose to challenge and disrupt the status quo that many of us are sitting here today. Today, I'm joined with next gen and established leaders on what they think breaking business challenges mean. I'm joined with Sam Hammock, leader of global talent at Verizon, Magna Sina, VP of Artificial Intelligence, and Kiara Leite, who is the senior analyst and former ad fellow. So Sam, I want to start with you because I know you're newer to the company and I know you lead our HR talent center of excellence, which sounds so fancy and I want to get into that. But first I want to know what was it about Verizon that got drew you here? What was it that made you want to come and join the company? Yeah, thanks Raquel. So today is my 88th day. And I say that with like pride and excitement (laughs) because not because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been 88 days. I say that because I'm like, oh my gosh, this has been the most amazing 88 days. Um, And (laughs) I am really, really loving it. And the thing that drew me into the company is actually the thing that gives me the most energy and excitement every day. So it is, it's been true in every sense of the way, which is the people and the vision for the future. And so part of it is, to your point, like, hmm, heading global talent kind of sound of like fancy. Uh, it is. I may have the best job ever. <laughs> but, but a lot of this is, you know, when we think about why did I come, what excited me about Verizon, first of all, and first and foremost, it's Verizon, right? I mean, this is a huge, amazing company with a a great brand and a clear vision of how we play and make a difference in the future and in lives across the globe uh, with our networks and our all the products and things that we do. Um, So that was certainly uh, something that really I felt was compelling was the vision and the clarity uh, of the direction of this company and what we really will do. Uh, Secondly was the leadership. Um, And, you know, I had conversation with Christy and other leadership members and, you know, you meet those people and you're like, I want to work with these people. You you become inspired (laughs) through one conversation. You feel their energy in the way that you're talking to you. And by the way, we're feeling energy through screens these days, which is not as easy as being in the room. And so uh, that and then the people, Uh, the people has been what for the last 88 days is just giving me such inspiration and motivation um, to continue to be here, want to show up for them. The the culture that exists today and the way people support people uh, is just tremendous. So that's what, that's what brought me here. That's what keeps me here. And the future that we are building is beyond exciting. Absolutely. And you speak on this future that we're building. Can you tell me a little bit about how we're going to develop the female talent so they can be a part of that future? And even more so, what are other businesses doing and what should they be doing? Because really, this should be a collective effort. This is a big topic. And we've, we've, we've heard and seen a bunch of stuff just this week alone on the importance of women in the workplace. And man, look at the progress we've made over the last few decades, uh, where we are, where we're going. Certainly the data is very telling in terms of the numbers of the impacts we've made in the C-suite, in the boardrooms. Uh, It's going in the right direction. What I am frighteningly aware of is we are on the cusp of a crisis as well with women leaving the workplace due to the pandemic and the stresses that are being put on lives. So um, the simplest answer is, and by the way, this is something that Verizon has done tremendously well pre-pandemic and certainly has shown up with empathy and support during this pandemic for our women leaders and employees um, across the entire company is, One, you need that infrastructure in the system. So what are the programs? What are the benefits? We had paid part-time leave and so many things that we have offered to support. Um, But a lot of it is leading with the empathy and compassion. Do I see you? Do I know what you're going through? Do I know that you are within shouting distance for the last 51 weeks of every single person of your family is living with you while you're working? Um, And I think we have to continue to see people. And the other thing is women are really hard on themselves. And so um, how we allow ourselves to cut ourselves some slack and helping each other 
right? Because we're not gonna we're not gonna reach perfection. And by the way, women love to be uh, perfect, right? <laughs> we but do. we have to know we're not gonna get there right now, and that's okay. That's okay. So I think that you know how we've been supporting certainly the tremendous um, things that we have done, the benefits, the programs, the support that we have for women. Um, has, has been amazing. And then we do wonderful development programs, right? So how can we help you own your own career, own your development, right? And really achieve the ambitions that you have in front of you that you want to reach. Yes. And I really appreciate what you said about just the learning, the development, the mentorship, networking. That's something that I felt personally that I experienced with Ad Fellows. Um, and that's one of Verizon's development programs for new talent coming in who want experience in the marketing world. And I was able to walk away with the tool set I needed to have a seat at the table that I've always wanted to sit at. And I'm proud to say that 68% of ad fellows happen to be women. And I just remember being around so many amazing young women who wanted to be at that table and have inspired me and continue to learn and grow with me as we all are at Verizon or in different places, but one of them being Kiara. So Kiara and I are both Ad Fellow alums. We have a lot in common. We're newer to the company, newer to the industry. But Kiara, I want to get your perspective about what it means for people like us who are young, diverse, to have a seat at the table and what it means for that diversity to accurately reflect the actual diversity of our nation. Yeah. Hi, Raquel. It's great to see you and thanks for having me today. You know, when I think of having a seat at the table, it's something that as women, we continuously have to ensure that we're participating in. Um, that we're being heard and that we're being listened to. And I think there's also a, a huge difference between, you know, someone just hearing your voice and the sound that is coming out of your mouth versus actually listening and digesting and understanding uh, what you're saying. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate to be part of a generation that, that has so many rights that, you know, we have the right to vote, join the military, hold a position in office, to be more than just a take care, uh, caretaker or a housewife if we choose to. Um, but when I think back to the generations before me, before us, um, what what they went through for me to even have a shot at becoming any of these things, it, it, it shocks me every time I think about it. And you know, yes, we have these rights now, but there are so many ways that the disparity between men and women continue today from salary differences, from professional titles. And even recently, you know, I've just been doing some adult research and I learned that there's different processes to own a home for a single woman versus a single man. Um, so for women to be at the same playing field as men, you know, we need to continue to make sure that our voices are heard, that we have women representation throughout all different aspects of our lives and that, you know, we continue to set an example for the future generations. And can you tell me a bit about your personal career experience? Because you rotated at, at Verizon, but I also know that you were in Adfa a little bit before I was. And I'm just curious about how that informed how you think about breaking barriers. I feel like I've been breaking barriers since I was younger. So having moved to the U.S. from a different country at a young age, there was a social and the language barrier that I had to overcome. Then there's the educational financial barrier that I had to push my way through. And once I was reaching my last semester of college, it was time for me to go back to the drawing board and make sure that all the hard work paid off and that I was going to get a job. So luckily, I found the Ad Fellows program during my last semester of school, which happened to be a semester abroad in Australia. Um, and I applied for for the program, interviewed virtually, and just kept my fingers crossed that I made the cut for the program. Um, didn't hear from anyone all summer. And then about two weeks before the program started, um, before it was scheduled to begin, I got a phone call. And then the rest was history. And throughout the program, I was introduced to not only the world of marketing, which you know I love and have such an admiration for, but also the world of technology, which is something that I was never exposed to. Um, and if it wasn't for me, being able to join, you know, a DNI internship like Ad Fellows, I wouldn't have the knowledge as to the possibilities of positions that are held by women um, in the technology industry. So from the moment that I was hired at Verizon, I always had, you know, female leaders to look up to from my direct manager, my director, my VP in the corporate communications team, which is where I started, to now the amazing women leaders in the sales operation and consumer group that I'm a part of. Um, it makes me really proud to know that this is a place that 
I know I can grow and be a successful female leader in if I put my head and my heart into it. Absolutely. And thinking of the future to kind of go off of this theme, Magna, I want to turn to you because you work with artificial yes. intelligence and data, which is the science of the future. And I am just curious about what got you into AI because only 12% of women are AI researchers. So I would consider you a barrier breaker yourself. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just very curious about what got you into the industry. Thank you for inviting me. First of all, this is, this is a great conversation and I just enjoyed getting to know Sam and Kiara. Uh, so right there, that that's a big win. My story is very typical uh, girl story. I used to think computers are for boys. Uh, well into my teenagers, uh, there were computer courses. It just was like, I'm like, I don't want to be a coder because I thought that's what guys do. <laughs> and uh, But I was very curious and I was good at numbers. I liked figuring out patterns in what I saw. Um, so that's what took me into statistics and um, problem solving. I, I, I like those, the so critical thinking, problem solving. And then I realized computers are just a massive calculator to do the same thing that I'm doing with pen and paper. And, and then it changed my attitude towards it and real, it became a tool to solve problems. Um, and, and uh, you know, like the tools that were available back then were like things like even Excel, uh, right? Like, it's like, oh, I can do these things very, very fast. And that led to, you know, okay, what does SAS do? It's uh, one of the languages we use and then you get into Python. And uh, three years ago or four years ago, I took a full on course in neural network, you know, like it's basically, you know, like what's the forefront of artificial intelligence. And um, I, I am once again a student and a learner again. So um, it's it's really, it's it's the curiosity that has, you know, kind of like I've just pursued that and it has introduced me to a lot of tools that I would have never even considered tools and options for myself. So Magna, according to a study by Generation STEM, 57% of girls say they don't consider a career in STEM. And what would you tell these young girls? Actually, I, I will tell you a conversation that I've been having in my own house. Um, I have a 17 year old daughter. And um, as I, sh I shared previously, when I was growing up, I used to think technology and computers and all of these things are for boys. Um, so. She, not quite in the same way, but she also feels like she doesn't really want to do AI or, you know, that seems like not that interesting. But then the conversation I have with her is that think about technology that has been built in the last 20, 30 years. You know, your, our parents started with radios and televisions, and then we got all these gadgets. Um, these technologies can do things. Then we started putting data in it. Data is nothing, but it's the eyes and ears of technology. That's how a, a tech piece of technology can sense, it can see, it can hear, and we learn about it. With AI, we are putting a brain inside these technology. And with ethics and all these conversation on doing the right thing, AI for good, we're thinking about the heart of technology. When you think about designing the heart of the technology, designing the brain of the technology, getting it to help humanity, uh, imagine how uh, how great it will be if we had more girls also doing this. It's not just about writing lines and lines of code, but it's also building and designing the technology that supports the society. And can I just ask, are there any barriers you felt you faced while pursuing a career in STEM? Are there any barriers that um, you feel have had progress, but you still feel like we have work to do in some areas? What What can you say about that? I'm lucky to be here and I am standing on the shoulders of all my managers and mentors and coaches. Um, and they saw something that I didn't see and I'm just, I just kind of stumbled upon that. Uh, I still think there is a, there is, there isn't really a lot of clarity in terms of how do you actually, uh, let's say you're mid career and you want to get into this. How do you find somebody who can help you? Um, what resources should you go after? Uh, it's not just, you know, like when MBA was the hottest thing, you could get an MBA degree and switch career. That's not the case with a technology job. And and so unless you know somebody in your network, it's very hard to navigate that. And I think it's harder for girls uh, unless there's somebody in your family. Um, you Where do you start? Like, how do you have that conversation? So 
I still think that is the biggest barrier is finding the right allies, mentors, and even sponsors, I would say. I'm also fairly new uh, at Verizon, uh, seven months into this job. Um, and we talked a lot about sponsorship in particular um, for women in STEM uh, in my previous uh, uh, career. So I think that is that is something that we should probably consider making a bigger deal here as well. Yeah, for sure. And because you ended on kind of a challenge to the company, I want to open this up to a round robin for everybody because I want to hear everyone's perspective. And then we all are kind of new to the company. What challenge do you have for our next generation of women leaders? And what challenge can you lead them today that will manifest into change? One of the things that I would challenge, and it's a little bit of what uh, Magna said, right? Of I think there we have we have we still have a issue that we're facing in finding the right allies, mentors, sponsors, right? And so a, a little bit on that thing, and I would challenge us to not wait for someone to create something that says, oh, here's how you can do it. I would challenge us to be, be selfish in that way. Let's look and find our own. Look at the people and the leaders around you who are um, leading in ways that you want to emulate, working in fields that you have um, aspiration to grow into. So let's find those people. Let's make those networks and let's really drive that forward. I have two, two things to say. One is that Totally agree with you, Sam, that, uh, you know, let's proactively, you know, go. Uh, there is a person on LinkedIn who reached out to me. She lives in Italy and she said, hey, can you help me? And so we talk on Sundays, right? Uh, and the, the, the point is that if you approach somebody that you want to learn from, there is a very small chance they'll say no. So that's on you. So, so go approach the person that you look up to or you think you can benefit from. The other thing I would say is like for if you are in a position where you see that, I think also pulling somebody up, right? Like seeing somebody and saying, hey, I see that you have good critical thinking. Try this course, right? Like, you know, give them something that they can at least try and, and explore. Um, so I think I would say that like for for those who have arrived or those who see it, I think they also have a, you know, what the, that saying is like, if, if you took the elevator up, you have the responsibility to send it back to uh, others. I totally believe in that. So look out for somebody that you think um, and have that, chalk, uh, have, have that talk proactively. Um, I, I do want to uh, talk a different uh, thing that in terms of challenge is that, um, you know, this we are talking about, you know, how do we uh, bring people into STEM particularly, like at least that's how I'm looking at uh, but also we have a retention challenge. So, you know, uh, the diversity and the inclusion, there are two parts of the same equation. The one is how do we bring diverse thinking and diverse background and skill sets into the space? But I, I've also, I've been in the space 22 years. I think retention is a big challenge, especially for women. Uh, you know, the work schedules are, are, are very uh, unstructured and how do you manage kids' school drop-offs and sports activities and all of that? So I think we have to think about like what kind of flexibility are we going to offer so women stay, not just come in and but go after a couple of years. Yeah, and to add to that, um, you know, something you mentioned, Magna, is is having being able to support people. And I've been lucky and fortunate to have people that supported me throughout, you know, my my career journey up until today. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm carrying that on and giving wow. young women and girls someone to look up to wow. the way that I have. So something that I did actually when Lent started, wow. you know, I was doing a lot of self-reflection and something that I challenged myself to do was just to do a lot more self-care, um, embracing my womanhood, embracing um, my beauty and myself, That's working great. on bettering myself inside and out. Um, and I know that doing that will have an impact on me in the workplace to, to be more confident, to speak up during meetings, and to just raise my hand to participate in as many opportunities um, as I can as I continue to grow as a professional. And I think that, you know, a challenge for the next generation is to just go for it. I think one of you mentioned this as well, that a lot of times we're nervous or we hold back and it breaks my heart to look at, you know, girls or young women or friends that they don't do something because they're nervous or they're scared or they don't know how things are going to end up. And us as women perfectionists that we are, as, as it's been mentioned here earlier, um, we, we, we hold back because we're like, if this isn't going to be perfect, then I don't want to do it, you know? Um, and there are so many times that we think about doing something and we think about it way too much. We put too much thought, um, but we don't often just take that leap of faith. And that's something that honestly... 
you know, this is Women's History Month, but I, but I admire it about the men. You know, men just go for it. They don't they don't think about the consequences sometimes, right? And and it ends up working out for the most part. Like um, Magna said, if you ask someone um, for help, there's a very slim chance that they won't say no. If you take that leap of faith, there's a very slim chance that it might not um, end up in some uh, beneficial outcome. Um, and if there are any consequences, you learn from them. So that's my challenge, you know, for the next generation to just take that leap of faith um, deal with the road bumps as you're going through that journey, as you navigate through what you set out to do, and, and it'll all work out in the end. I love that. Take that leap of faith. Absolutely. That's something I did myself because I was nervous to do this panel, but I thought to myself, <laughs> I can do it. It's going to be great. There's going to be a wonderful woman that I'll have the opportunity to talk to and learn from. And I think it's a perfect example of how we challenge ourselves every day to reach that next bar and just try and develop ourselves however we can. So I appreciate you all so much for <laughs> joining me today at this panel. And for those watching, remember to choose the challenge. This is our charge to you today and every day, and it's how we'll continue to move the world forward.